السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون uh, my beloved brothers and sisters, we begin by expressing words of gratitude and praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the one who has created us, molded us, fashioned us, perfected us, and allowed us to have the guidance from Him as we traverse this planet for a short period of time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in giving us the guidance, recognize that we will make mistakes, we will do things sometimes which we are not proud of. And so he has made one of his attributes to be at tawwab one who forgives over and over again. And so we have the opportunity that when we backpedal or we do something that we are not proud of, that we can turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask from him to help us and forgive us. And so we have a merciful God. I had a friend of mine who was like a Muslim going into Christianity and so one day I was talking to him trying to bring him back into Islam and explain and he said you know what there's a problem I have with Islam and he said when I read the Quran all it talks about is fear 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 and when I talk to the Christians it's all about love 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 and what I found out was that there are some translations of the Quran which translates the word taqwa as fear. So, Ya Lazina Amanu Taqullah, O you who believe, fear Allah. And so, when he reads, and taqwa is mentioned many, many times in the Quran, so all he's reading this translation saying, fear, 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 fear. Whereas the, the word itself does not really mean that. It really means observe your duty to God, be mindful of your duty to Allah. You know, it, it's there are much better translations than just fear. And then I had to explain to him that Islam has a lot of love in it. You know, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, he uses two main words to express love. Number one is hub, and the other one is mawadda. An example of the, the mawadda became very famous because it's used a lot of time at weddings, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجَ لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمِ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ 
And among the signs of Allah is that he has created for you spouses that you might find tranquility in them. And that Allah places between you mawadda, love and mercy. And in that are signs for those who reflect. And then Allah uses hub almost 76 times in the Quran. All over the Quran you find the word hub and its various versions. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here uses Say, if you love Allah, then obey Muhammad and then Allah will love you and, and forgive you your sins for Allah is most merciful. He's غَفُورٌ Rahim, forgiving and merciful. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse indicates to us how we can earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, if you claim that, tell the people that if you say you love Allah, then the manifestation of that love has to be obedience to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Allah will love you. So we see in this ayah that Allah makes his love where you have to earn it. You have to do something to earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Throughout the Quran, he gives many things of what Allah loves. Allah loves the yuhibbul muhsineen. Allah loves the people who do good. Yuhibbul sabirin. Allah loves the people who are patient. Yuhibbul muqsiteen. The people who are just. And so Allah mentions many places, but all of these places, He's giving you a characteristic that you have to aspire to. When you reach the level of muhsineen or sabirin or being just, then Allah loves you. And as to the ayah that Allah says, if you want to earn my love to obey Muhammad, وسلم, the companions took this not only figuratively but literally. And anything that the Prophet ﷺ asked them to do, they were quick to obey. Even when in their own mind this didn't make sense. Like he went to one of the, the people who plant the, the crops. And the Prophet ﷺ made a suggestion to him that he should do it another way. And the guy's crops died. He came back to the Prophet ﷺ, you know, Basically, I grew up all my life doing it this way. And when you told me this is a do it another way, I'm thinking that you know what you're doing. And the Prophet ﷺ said, I was just advising you as a human being, not as a prophet. And so the companions began to now, whenever they were not comfortable with what the Prophet ﷺ said, they would turn to him and said, are you saying this as a revelation from Allah, that Allah has instructed you to do this to us? Or is this something from your own personal opinion? as a human being. But their default mode was a same wa ta, we hear, we obey. And why is it important to obey Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu to win the love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? When you will win, win the love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, you have won everything. كل أمتي يدخلون الجنة إلا من أبا كيلا ومن يعبى رسول الله قال من أعطاني دخل الجنة ومن أعصاني فقد أبا Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us that all of my ummah will enter the paradise except those who refuse. And then the companion says, who will refuse? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, those who obey me, here again, those who obey me will enter the Jannah. And those who disobey me are refusing Jannah. They're making a conscious decision to refuse this gift of Jannah. And so here we see the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the first and most critical love we need to have. It should supersede all other love you have. If you love your job and you love Allah and Allah asks you to do something that is against your job, your love for Allah comes first. If you love Allah and you love your parents and your parents ask you to do something to disobey Allah, even though you don't stop loving them, you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah's always comes first as our object of love. And then the Prophet 
Umar ibn Khattab once came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said, "Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, after myself, I love you the most in the world. After Allah, love Allah, I love myself, and then I love you." And the Prophet says, "No." To have true Iman, you have to love me even more than yourself. And Umar al Khattab come back and says, Ya Rasulullah, now I love Allah and His Messenger before I love myself. And the Prophet said, that is, the, that is Iman. That you have to be able to do that. And so that's the first kind of love that we are asked. And then the Prophet Sallallahu mentions, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَكُمْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَسْمُدْ That whenever we are speaking, those who believe in Allah in the last day, either speak good or keep quiet. To be conscious when you're dealing with your, your fellow human beings, that we must be very careful. One of the most disruptive things is when you speak ill of people, backbiting, gossiping, slandering. Lots of crimes get committed because of the tongue. In fact, the Prophet says that this tongue and our private parts will be two things that will take us most into the hellfire. That he says, you know, that you will not be able to do. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب ما يحب لنفسه. And he said, you will never have the Iman you need until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. And the people who do the sharh or the explanation of a hadith, they said this brother doesn't mean Muslim brother alone. But we have to love humanity and each other as much as we love ourselves. And so Islam advocates love in a very big way. The Prophet ﷺ was so keen and concerned about this. That when they were doing the Treaty of Hudaybiyah and the, the persons who were the antagonists were coming to sign this treaty, Abu Jahl's son, Ikrimah, who was not a Muslim at the time, he was going to come to negotiate on behalf of the non-Muslims, the Quraysh. And the Prophet ﷺ turned to his companions and he said, I need you to restrain yourself from saying insulting remarks or critical remarks or or demeaning remarks to ikrama don't allow your hatred for his father or what he has done to just be on this that you must have decorum and manners <laughs> behave in a nice way the prophet ﷺ used to treat his enemies kindly Allah says not equal is good and evil. And we must always repel evil with what is good. And he said when we do that, the person who was our biggest enemy, we begin to show them good they will end up being your bosom friend, your close friend. They will turn out from enemy to become a friend to you. Because when you continue to show love to someone who hates you, the psychology of the human nature is that they will cannot remain hating you if you continue to show love all the time. Their mind and their heart and their psyche will break down and they will eventually stop the hatred. In Ta'if, they beat up the Prophet so badly, and yet, in an act of love for them, told Allah, do not destroy them. The people of Makkah, who threatened to assassinate the Prophet, boycotted him for three years, tried to murder him, and all of that. And the Prophet, out of love for all of them, forgive them. The companions understood this, that love was paramount. And so when they migrated from Mecca to Medina, the people who lived in Medina knew that these were immigrants coming. Had no place to go. Had left everything that they owned in Mecca. Their careers, their property, their jobs. And they came penniless because the Prophet ﷺ said, Migrate for the sake of Allah. 
And when they went, the people of Medina turned and they were paired off into groups. And one took one in the family. And they were turned to the people of Mecca, those brothers and sisters, in an act of love and says, this is all the wealth I have. Take half of it for yourself. And the total stranger took them into their homes and shared their wealth with them. We are a religion that promotes love. That we have to love each other. We have to love humanity. And we have to manifest that love in all sorts of ways. Because we are loving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is, one of his attributes is love. And then Allah mentions to us, Inna ja'alna ma'ala al-ardi zinatan laha linnabluwahum ayyuhum ahsanu amala. And we have made the earth beautiful and well decorated and ornamented for you in order to test those among you who will do right by it. To test your, if we will be able to appreciate and protect the earth. If we'll be able to love the planet to the extent that we will do the right thing. He has given us this planet in the most magnificent way. That when we look at the grass and the greens and the trees, it's restful to our eyes. Allah could have created this planet where it becomes so difficult for even watch it. But he said, has made it as an ornamentation for you to see which of you will do right by it. And we have set rules in our faith. You can't urinate everywhere. You can't just go and urine under a tree. You can't do all of this. There are many rules in our faith of how you manifest the love for the planet. And the Muslims should be the greatest advocates of trying to save this planet from where it is heading. Because our faith teaches us that. To plant trees. And if you plant a tree and someone stole a fruit, you get reward of sadaqah, of charity. Even if somebody steals from your trees. We're encouraged to take care of the planet. And so love is manifested, my time is up, in both love of Allah, love of your fellow human beings, and love of the planet. And so we should not operate and behave as people who when others see us, we are among the most hated group in the world. People don't like us. They feel uncomfortable in our presence. You know, this is a season of love. Christmas, you know, everybody is trying to show love. You know, for us, we show love all year round. And so I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us loving people. Don't worry about what they do to you. You show love. La darar wa la darar. We don't harm, we don't reciprocate harm with harm. You know, we show what is better. Repel evil with what is good, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells. And you will see an amazing difference. We've got to win that war of again letting people know that the most loving people on earth are the Muslims. That we are the advocates of love and peace and justice and mercy. And it has to begin by how we live our lives, how we treat our spouses, how we treat our children, how we treat our fellow workers. We've got to begin with that conversation and become a beacon of love, exhibited. The word mawadda actually means actions of love. The word hope, the scholar says, it's a state of love. Like your personality is a loving one, a loving heart. And mawadda is actions that demonstrate love. And so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help all of us to be able in this season to be, begin to become that kind of person. Loving. People always want to hang around you because you're always kind and generous and loving. This is the personality that we need to have, inshallah. I don't want to spend too much time talking about Christmas this time. Um, if you need to have information about Christmas in terms of all the, the thick rules, you can go to songvision.com or muslimmatters.org and they have all the answers in terms of 
if you can say Merry Christmas to your friends and go to the parties and have the Christmas trees and the lights and all the other stuff that um, we talk about every year, you can find information about all of that. But I wanted for us to begin to change our personalities as the new year is coming up, to become more loving, to become more merciful, to be more, more kind, inshallah. Kul kul Alhamdulillah, Bilal Amin, Hamdan Kasiran, Tayyiban Mark and Fee, when I shadow and lay lahi la lahuata, when I shadow and the Muhammad Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Robert, Robinati Nafid, Dunya Hassan, or Fila, Hassan, or Kinaza Banar, Robin, I in the Nas, Samir, Namanadi, and Adil Iman, and Amen, Uber Rabikum, Amena, Nasafur Lahu, Lazila, Ilah, Ilah, or Hayyul Kayumana to Wilik, in the Lahi Amor of Bilal, or Hassan, or Ita, or Kurba, Wayanha, and Fashay, or Mukrabagi, as a Kumla Alakum to the Kurun, Uskur Lahi Askurkum, Wakim or so.